In the 45 years since Jonestown, a lot of clinical research has gone into the phenomena of cults. And researchers have been able to come up with a kind of pattern that cults tend to have. So let's go through that pattern step by step. We begin with identifying people who are potential targets. Cults tend to go after people who have some kind of emptiness. The person has a void to fill and a magical or fantastic solution is offered to fill this emptiness. In the cult classic movie, The Craft, for example, a group of unhappy young adults are bullied and disenfranchised. So they turn to magic to help them feel empowered. That's pretty much the exact same plot as Starry Eye and Shortcut to Happiness. Selling your soul to escape mediocrity is a well-known trope. And while most people would reject an outright offer from Satan, psychological tactics that hit your subconscious are extremely effective. It's very important for you to actively monitor the mental health of your loved ones, especially adolescents. Remember what scripture tells us. Many bad decisions happen because of bitterness. For Bible believers who are unhappy, the thought of a sudden, spontaneous pre-trib rapture seems like a fantastical answer to their prayers. Now, please understand, I'm not saying that you are mentally sick if you happen to believe in pre-trib rapture doctrine. I'm only saying that a preoccupation with running from your troubles is typically a sign of mental distress. And in the Christian evangelical world, resorting to the pre-trib rapture is what typically happens for this kind of person. Indeed, we see this play out every day when we go to a certain person's channel. A cursory glance through the comment section will show you how many people in this audience are clinically troubled. Now, I won't show any names here of these people, but I do want to highlight some of these comments because many, many people in Mandy's audience admit to major clinical issues. Some of them are on medication for major depression. Some of them outright admit to feeling suicidal. And some of them say they simply can't take it anymore. This is not just a few isolated cases. This is very, very common in Mandy's audience. Okay, that explains why Mandy has such a big audience. But why did she herself get mixed up in this? Well, I think Mandy gives us the answer to that question. I was um, kind of idolizing the world a little too much. Um, idolizing music, singer, songwriter. Um, there's nothing wrong with going after your dreams, but um, I was just doing it the wrong way, you know, going in debt, um, not, not pursuing it the correct way, the way I think God wanted me to pursue it, but. Mandy may have gotten over her love of country music, but something tells me she hasn't been healed from her desire to be famous. And the clinically unstable audience she has cultivated on YouTube is all too happy to shower her with adoration. So an empty person has found a fantastical way to fill the void. The fantastical solution usually involves esoteric science that is revealed to certain gifted people. And those who are in this special club are the ones who are awake. Sound familiar? And then, so when we walk in the spirit and we have the spirit of God, he starts to give us understanding and it just honestly, I'm telling you, I know this is a gift, okay? And that for some reason, he, for some reason he's given to me, I don't know why. And one was saying that what I do with numbers, which is math, is witchcraft, which it's not. Um, and like it's literally natural number math and Strong's Bible number meanings because God has meaning for all things, his creation, everything's numbered, everything is named by our all-powerful, all-knowing God. 
The only way to access the magical solution is to do the esoteric science. And people who don't want to do this will simply not enjoy the fruits of the solution. But this life-saving knowledge can't just be given for free. The process has to be done as a slow roll. Progressive unveiling of revelation knowledge, usually done through daily or weekly sessions to keep the carrot on the stick. The audience is trained to check in daily or weekly for a fresh boost of hopium, and this creates an addiction on the related dopamine in the brain. Before long, the members are conditioned to check in for a daily shot of dopamine. The keepers of knowledge become kind of babysitters whom the rest of the cult looks to for direction and daily updates. The next step is to isolate members from any critic who could talk sense into them. They're given a message that people on the outside just don't get it. Outsiders are not awake. Outsiders are not spiritually paying attention. To leave the group and join those scoffers would be betrayal. It would cause you to lose your hope in the great solution and maybe even cost you your salvation. And then we get to trauma bonding. A bad situation is created. A situation that is usually either embarrassing or slightly traumatic. And when this event happens, the group is expected to defend themselves. They all come together, they defend their group in the face of this embarrassing accusation, they bond over what they've been through together, and then the battle lines are deeper between them and the outside world. The first episode is something trivial that can easily be explained. But as the cycle continues, the episodes get more and more severe, conditioning the victim to explain away increasingly worse and worse episodes. Soon the nasty accusations are flying, the members are resentful and protective, and a standoff is well underway. The victim can sense that this is unhealthy, but there's no way out. Members who make it this far are in too deep. They've committed themselves to irrational excuses, and they've convinced themselves that their critics are wrong. When a person gets to this stage of indoctrination, it takes almost something supernatural to break them out of it. People assume you can protect yourself from this by just sitting down and reading the Bible. But it isn't quite that simple. Twisted minds produce twisted doctrines. Only when a heart and mind have been healed can we sit down to read the Bible clearly? As we're told in Proverbs 4, above all else, guard your heart. As for the members of a certain YouTube channel, there's not much we can say that hasn't already been said. All we can do for now is pray for the Lord to supernaturally intervene and have faith that he will. In the meantime, let's be gracious and loving so that when more people come to their senses, they will have the courage to walk away.